Yeah, it's, the thing the thing that's really something is that uh, you know that running away is uh, is is heroic. And eating a Caesar salad in the airport. Did you see that? Yeah. My first meal as a fugitive. These people have the highest opinions of themselves. It disgusts me. Don't let them get you down, Grace. No, it's not really them. I'm trying to cancel an excise tax in Boston, and that's kind of grinding my gears. I'm taking it out on my heroes. Good luck. Yeah. I paid. I paid for years after I moved out of Cambridge. I'm about it was to do just, the same It was thing. just easier, you know. Oh, you have to come down to City Hall and cancel. It, it, the excise tax was about fifty bucks, so I'm gonna I'm gonna go down to City Hall in Central Square and park. The parking meter is gonna be broken. I'm gonna get a ticket. The ticket is gonna be more than fifty bucks. Yeah, the amount of emotional and, damage it would cost and then, you. And then I'm gonna go down there, and they're gonna say, "Prove that you don't live in Cambridge anymore." And how am I going to do that? It's just, you know, good luck, Grace. That's all I can say. Yeah. That's why I'm a little edgy right now. Yeah. You might be better. You know the, the alternative? What, paying it? Take your car down to the, uh, take your car down to one of those uh, docks that haven't been redeveloped. Push it into the water. Well, that's the thing is I have a new and, car than what, what, oh, what that's the tax right. that's was right. on. See, I had, a, I had a 59 Chevy, so it wasn't a big problem for me. And we had, and they, we also had the Alston train yards back then. That, that was a good place for burning a car. But it's, it's now, that, now that's been redeveloped. I mean, what, what the hell is this community coming to? You're telling me, bro. <laughs> I don't want to pay it. All right, go ahead. What do you got to do? This is time now for Grace's Notes. All right, so I wanted to start today with the interesting tidbit that Jill Biden, the first lady, will in fact be going to Japan. Japan for the woke Olympics. Yes, and this is just one of many things that Jill has uh, gone to in place of Joe Biden. And it's interesting. Uh, I find her to be an interesting figure. Is she going to be making any lectures at uh, medical schools in uh, Japan since she is, of course, Dr. Jill Biden? I don't know. That's a very, very good question. Um, In other news, speaking of traveling, John Kerry is traveling to Moscow. Lovey! Lovey, what is the mask requirement in Moscow? It's the only choice for somebody like me. He's traveling there to talk about climate change, of course. Is it is it time, Taylor? I think it's time, Taylor, for for your new uh, Taylor. Taylor did a uh, a mashup. Is it Jim Backus, a aka Mr. Magoo, or is it John Kerry? The military thing is to come to attention when your superior officer enters a room. I'm John Kerry, and I'm reporting for duty. Very taut, very military. We've got to get a kind of wartime mentality here. Let me give you a measure of that. Don't say this is a war thing. Oh, poof. So we've got to come together with the same mentality with which we have fought wars. I I mean, you've got to spend what you need to spend. Well, you haven't got the knack of being idly rich. You say you should do like me. The pleasures are unlimited. We gave them a little bit of money that was released at that period of time not as part of the nuclear arrangement that's the way i was taught at smu smu super millionaires university i think the hearing was set from 10 to noon and i could push to 12 30 but i am quite a commercial is he a member of the club is he a millionaire and how can the likes of him join the likes of us it's the only choice for somebody like me well stop kidding will you make us some drinks we just press the button back there mark boom it's the only way to fly. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. <laughs> nice work, Taylor. Nice work. Um, but speaking of climate change, AOC, she's very quiet on what's happening in Cuba. You'll notice, Howie, that at certain points when you think AOC is going to have an opinion, that's when she gets, that's when she shies away from it. It's like the border. She was down there in a white jumpsuit with red lipstick when Trump was president. And now she's nowhere to be found about the migrant children. And it's the same goes with Cuba. N- nothing to say. Just keep them quiet. But she had something to say, of course. I'm starting to realize that climate change is like their panic button. You know, when things aren't going their way, they'll just throw in something about climate change. So she's back to saving the world. This is AOC Cut 26. You know, we have many, there's many, many different actions that we need 
in a climate bill for reconciliation, whether it's a civilian climate core, whether it is uh, increased infrastructure and investment in rail and mass transit, and whether it's also um, centering frontline indigenous, black and brown and low income communities that are polluted on and often experience the greatest brunt uh, and will be experiencing the greatest brunt of climate change related infrastructure failures. Howie, will you be a captain of the Civilian Climate Corps? Captain the, Carr. The conservation, uh, conservation, Civilian Conservation Corps worked out so well in the uh, New Deal. And the, the, I mean, this is what a, we're back to the future. And, give, and rail traffic, it, that worked out so splendidly in California. They still owe billions of dollars on those uh, bust out uh, projects. Well, you know what, though? Member AOC at one point said she liked the idea of uniforms, of people wearing, like having a certain uniform every day because it eliminates the amount of clothes you have to buy and outfits you have to pick out. That could be, you know, part of this, too, is that the Civilian Climate Corps will all wear a matching outfit. You know, she's into rapid transit, too. I would like to see AOC take a quiz on the either the New York City or the Boston transportation systems considering she lived in both places do you think she knows very much about you know how to get into get into manhattan from brooklyn well remember that new york post article that talked about her climate footprint there was less uh about the subway and there was more about the escalade that she was driving in or the suv of some sort yes so i'm gonna say no i I wouldn't put my money on it yeah I'm I'm guessing she I'm guessing if going back to BU days I'm guessing she doesn't know the uh, the 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 color of the line that ran down Commonwealth Avenue. She's a big fan of Uber though. Takes a lot I'll, of Ubers. I'll bet. I'll bet. <laughs> <laughs> I'll bet she's got that app in every one of her cell phones. Mel Gibson's in the news. Did you hear about this? I he he saluted the president at uh, some big uh, big event in Vegas. Yes, it's a UFC match, which I'm sure you you're a big fan of UFC, Howie. I know, it, I know you tune into all that stuff. I I don't really, but <laughs> but uh, there was a lot of people there. This huge event, MMA fight between McGregor and another guy I haven't heard of. And so Mel Gibson was there. He saw the president, President Trump, walking in. He saluted him. And then people melted down. The liberals were triggered by this. They were horrified. Well, they're permanently triggered by him. It's not anyway. like Mel Gibson had a career right. left to destroy. Well, that was I, actually one of them. Hey, I, hey, hey, I resent that, Taylor. He, he was negotiating with the guy who bought the rights to the Brothers Bulger a few years back. He wanted a role for himself. And I suggested Buddy McClain. Which ones, you know, because Buddy was killed early in 65, so it wouldn't take up a lot of his time. Didn't work out, though. How does everything come back to your movie career, sir? Only- it's like you're like Kevin Bacon, six degrees of Howie Carr. <laughs> well, you'll, you'll notice, you'll, as, as Taylor pointed out, he doesn't have much of a career left, so that's how his career uh, intersected with mine. Yeah, well, on, the, on the downward <laughs> end. <laughs> <laughs> um, these are some of the comments. Someone said, I think Mel Gibson saluting Trump is going to make me fall over and die from not being surprised. Mel Gibson is a Trump supporter. Next thing you're going to tell me is that water is wet. Why are people surprised Mel Gibson is a Trump supporter? They are literally cut from the same cloth. They both, as a person, are awful. Both do great work in their respective fields. Huh? Yeah. Uh, that, that, was, that was a weak, that was a weak tweet. Yeah, they're not uh, phrased that well. The grammar is a little off for some of them. Uh, Grace's News is brought to you by Toyota of Portsmouth, the house of value. I love my RAV4 and everyone at Toyota from their sales to financing made me feel so comfortable. And it's a really nice place to go and check out cars, especially right now. I know a lot of places don't have a lot of cars in stock, but you can always count on Toyota of Portsmouth. They're located just south of the Portsmouth traffic circle off 95. So go to toyotaofportsmouth.com or visit them at the showroom and tell them I sent you. Howie, now I would like to play another cut if you're okay with it. Um, I would like to play a little bit of Kamala Harris. Uh, She's talking about these Texas Democrats who uh, have fled the state. Is this about the courage? I want to hear the cut about the courage. Flight is courage now. Yes, well, there's two cuts. She's really heaping on praise. And we'll just play both of them. First, let's play cut 18. I do want to first start by uh, making a statement about the, the legislators in Texas. 
who are showing extraordinary courage and commitment. I met with them when many of them traveled to Washington, D.C. We sat down and had an extensive conversation in the Roosevelt Room in the White House. And I applaud them standing for the rights of all Americans and all Texans to express their voice through their vote unencumbered. Um, unencumbered I will say by that, laws that they are, um, and regulations and state they legislatures. Are who are marching in the path that so many others before did when they fought and many died. I just want to say it doesn't make sense to say they're expressing their voice through their vote if they're not voting. If you're getting on a plane and leaving, that's not voting. Am I wrong? That doesn't make any sense well, to me. They call that voting with your feet. I guess. Yeah. James Tallarico, he's one of these Democrats, and this is this is how brave they think they are. Listen to this tweet, Howie. Talk about patting yourself. Is, on the he, is he as brave as, as he, you know, it's, it's going to be hard to top Andy Kim's bravery in giving his suit to the Smithsonian last week that he wore when he picked up a piece of garbage on January 6th or whatever the hell he did. Is he, is he more courageous than Andy Kim? Uh, he's, I'm going to say Rock yes. Rock me tender. Rock me gentle. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right, James. Who, knew, who You know, Sonny Bono, he, he had a, he was a, he was a singer and then he became a congressman. Why can't Andy Kim do it? You know? Well, they are singers. You heard George them singing Murphy, today. George in the Murphy was a, was a song and dance man and he became a senator from, uh, California. James Tallarico wrote, just landed in Memphis on our way to D.C. Thank y'all for your well wishes. Did they go by Graceland? We left behind our families, our livelihoods, and our beloved Texas. But our sacrifice is nothing compared to the sacrifices brave Americans have made throughout history to protect the sacred right to vote. Forget the Alamo. Davy Davy Crockett and uh, Jim Bowie and Colonel Travis got nothing on these guys. They weren't a private jet. I've never seen people want to be the hero so badly. It's just, it's really lame. Does this mean they support the filibuster? Because isn't well, this just sort of they're basically filibustering, isn't, yes. Isn't this just a big filibuster? This is just a, a, a filibuster with a bigger carbon footprint. There's so many elements. There's so many layers to this hypocrisy of this one situation. It's like a tiramisu. Like, they didn't wear masks. They're on private planes that are not good for the environment. They're filibustering. When they hate the filibuster, it's supposedly racist. And then they're tweeting about how wonderful they are. It's. I feel like I'm taking crazy pills. It's nuts. 508 says this is all about the Democrats annual pipe dream that Texas is in play. I, I don't even think, I don't, you know, since they started letting in all the illegal aliens and all these uh, towns on the cities on the Rio Grande started going to Republican for the first time ever. I don't think they're, I, I think they're just setting up an alibi for 2022. This is why we lost all these states. The Republicans, they, they introduced voter fraud suppression. I mean, voter suppression. No, I, I totally agree. And it does start to make you think at a certain point. So that now they've said that, you know, they, they need all these new voting laws because of rural communities, because they can't go to those people can't go to a Kinko's and make a photocopy, which technically they can't because Kinko's doesn't exist anymore. But then they also say, well, a lot of minority communities can't use the Internet and, or they can't get ideas. They need, they need a month to vote because they're so busy playing the banjo. And then when you eliminate all and that, doing the deliverance thing, and you know, the truth is, Howie, that all of those different groups have uh, access to voting, then you go, well, who is this for then? And I think you're right. It's just setting up a reason to say, this is not, this is fraud, whatever, whatever. Yeah. They insisted that people had to vote honestly and legally. That's racism. And that random people can't come and drop off 15 votes at once. Yeah. I, I read the things that they're trying to prevent, and I'm like, wait, th- they allow this to happen? Uh, I didn't even know this was possible. Oh, you can't go and drop 10 different votes off at a ballot yeah. box. It's like, wait, when you were allowed you, to you, do that? You That's insane. Get, you can get gas on the highway 24 hours a day. Why can't you vote 24 hours a day? Right? I think we just need to take a day off for voting. And then one day. Another holiday? That's a holiday I can Another get Another holiday? We'll still come into work. <laughs> Eden Pure. Thank you, Grace. Thank Eden you. Pure has Brought back the three pack for this week only. You can save two hundred dollars on an Eden Pure Thunderstorm Air Purifier three pack. You'll get three units for under two hundred bucks and save two hundred dollars. One for your basement, first floor, and second floor, all in one purchase. Allergy season is here and is not ending anytime soon. 
If you suffer from all the pollen, then you need the thunderstorm. With the three-pack, you can now enjoy clean air everywhere in your house or workplace. It's been months now that we've been talking about the thunderstorm air purifier. People still ask me if it really works. Not only does it really work, it really works in hours. The Eden Pure Thunderstorm Air Purifier is so small and so light that you can hold it in your hand like I'm doing right now and plug it into the wall. The best part is you don't have to replace any air filters, which of course saves you time and money. Other air purifiers can cost up to $600 for just one unit. Go to EdenPureDeals.com, click my name, and put in code word HOWIE3 to save $200 for their special three-pack. EdenPureDeals.com, click my name, and use code word HOWIE3. The three-pack special is for this week only. I'm Howie Carr. Don't touch that dial. Howie Carr will be back after this.